All right, students who want to welcome you to our technical drawing class. Now, today we're going to be going through our epicycloid and our hypocycloid. Now, there are a few things for you to know, students. What is an epicycloid? Now, if we think about two things, this is going to be referred to as our base circle. So, that is our base circle. And then now we're going to be having what is called our rolling circle. So this is referred to our, as a rolling circle. Alright? Now an epicycloid is a rolling circle that we have here that is rolling across the circumference of the base circle. And we're going to be plotting the point P as it makes a complete revolution without skipping or sliding, sliding on, on the track. Now this here, since it is on the outside of the circle, then it is referred to as an epicycloid. So this will be referred to as an epicycloid. Now, we have another scenario now where we have another circle that is rolling on the inside of the track. So you notice this one is now on the inside of the track. So it will be rolling along the inside of the track, making a complete revolution, no skidding or slipping. Now that now is referred to as an hypocycloid. Now, as the circles roll, then there will be what is termed an internal angle. So our internal angle is what we would find right here, theta. So this circle, it will roll and make a complete revolution. So as it makes one complete revolution, then it will have an internal angle. This is the angle now that will determine the internal span of which P makes as the circle. Rolling circle makes one complete revolution. Now we can find this angle by simply stating, using this formula, that 360 degrees times a rolling circle, the diameter of a rolling circle, divided by the diameter of our base circle. By doing that, we can find the angle right here. Now for your drawing that you're going to be doing, for your examples, I would like for you to use as the rolling circle, the diameter of the rolling circle, 60 millimeter and the diameter of the base circle I want for you to use 180 millimeter of course your span will be 120 degrees now we would like to set up the conditions for epicycloid so let us now go and set up the conditions for our epicycloid So this will be our base circle and of course on our base circle if I can sign up my center yeah so this will be our base circle So we have our base circle, we have our rolling circle. And as you can tell, it is on the outside. So the mere fact that it is on the outside, we would refer to it as an epicycle. Now we want to divide our rolling circle into 12 equal parts. But first, we want to locate our center for our rolling circle. So let us see if we can locate our center. And once we have located our center, then we can proceed by dividing our rolling circle into 12 equal parts and then we can proceed with our drawing. Alright? So having done that, then we will now bisect our circle into 12 equal parts. 
Now you know it by taking your circle, you need the radius of the circle. You can use your compass as well as you can use your set square, 60 30 set square. Bisected our circle is its 12 equal parts. And we're going to be calling this part right here P because we're going to be plotting P as it makes one complete revolution. Now we're going to be labeling, so this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, and of course your P is would be referred to as 12. Now we're going to be bringing across now our line. Now just like the side point, we're going to be bringing across the line. So 11 and 1 would share the said line. 10 and 2 would share the said line. 9 and 3, the same line. Now, if you realize the difference with our cycloid and our epicycloid was that. Huh. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Alright, so 7 and 8 share the same line. And then, of course, we have our 6 that will have its own line. Now, the difference between the cycloid and the epicycloid, as we mentioned earlier, is that the track for the cycloid will be straight. Now, the track for the epicycloid is circular. And it is run on the outside of that circular track. Now, as a result of that, the center line, you know, the center would have its own unique line. So, the center for the rolling circle will have its own unique line. So this line here will represent the center. Now just as we have done that, we now need to take the circumference of the circle. So, you know, just as we have done for the cycloid, we just take off our division. So one, two, three. This would be four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now, you know, just for you to understand the principle, we're going to be doing the first six because as you realize that our join would run off the board. That's the thing about, you know, when you're doing these types of drawings. So we're going to end your focus on the first six. So let me see if I can get a different color. Chalk. So I'm going to use a white one. So we're going to now run vertical lines through our divisions. So let me just move them for you. So this here would be one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to be using six. Because that is going to be showing us the peak, and then you just repeat repeating the process for the remaining six. Or maybe we can go to seven, eight, nine. All right. So now we're going to be drawing our lines from our center all the way through.
So you know this, we would have been running our line somewhere center right here of our base circle all the way through. Now this would be one. So if we go to our center right here, this will be C1. We have C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7. And we'll carry it all the way to C12. Now if we get back our rolling circle, the radius of our rolling circle. So if we get back the radius of our rolling circle. Then, if we should move to C1, which we have right here, then you know this, we could simply redraw that circle right here at C1. Now, where would be our P? Our P would move from here, and then now if our center C1 is here, then where is our one line? This is our one line. So it will now cut or one line right here. So that would be our first point. Now if we move to C2, and all we need to do is to redraw C2. So this would be our C2 line. This would be two. So we move to right here. Three. C3. So this would now be our three line right here. So we'll now move to three right here. Four and just as well, we have this would be our four line. So our circle cut our four line right there. Five. So our circle cut our five line right here. And then as we know, six would be right on top, right there. But nonetheless, we can draw our circle or six all the way. Now seven would be moving from top down. So this would now be our seven. So if you notice we have a lovely curve coming across and of course it would be a free hand curve. So it would be a free hand curve. And as we encourage you students do not stop in the hole. You want to go in and out of that hole. And then, and then you'll hear him to be carrying it all the way. All right. So this now would be a true reflection as to what our epicycle would be looking like. Now of course we have C8, C9, C10, C11, C12. So you would continue the same process all the way until it closes. So that is it for our epicycle. And uh, you know what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be taking a pause right here for you to go through it. But just a way of you know just a little recap. So remember that the episode slide rules on the outside of our circle. So we have created our base circle. Our base circle. So our base circle for your purpose, or your base circle will be 180. Um, the diameter of your base, base circle will be 180 millimeters. Then you'll have your rolling circle. So the diameter of your rolling circle will be 60 millimeters. And uh, you know what you would have done, you notice that they share the same center, so to speak. You know, you have the center for your rolling circle right here, you have the center for your base circle right here, but you'll join the centers. You have in the same line, every single one has the same centers joined on the same line at all times. So once you're between that, you're going to be plotting P as it makes one complete revolution. Alright, so we're going to encourage those students to draw your epicycloid and then where we're going to move on from there is that our next drawing is that we're going to be teaching the principles as to how you draw your ankle cycloid and that now would be your rolling circle you know, rolling on the inside of your base circle on Friday.